Hey, so in this video I'm going to show you how I apply and paint my bald cap. Um, I did make this bald cap out of cap plastic and you can watch that video here if you'd like to know how I did it. Um, I'm I'm still trying to work out how to adequately hide the hair under the ball cap. I've been having some problems, so for this one, I sprayed it back with hairspray and kind of twisted it around itself and used some hair clips in it, but it still showed through and had a weird shape in the back. So maybe I'll write a little bit more about my problems and what I've tried with hiding the hair in a description box. Um, and if you have any recommendations of how I can improve this technique and what's your way to hide longer hair that's you know, shoulder length and below, I would love to hear it in the comments below. So first of all, you put the ball cap over your head. You want to check that it fits okay and that everything's long enough. And I'm going to roll up the top and I'm going to be using Prosaic to apply this. You can also use something like Telesis if you're made of money. No, I'm just kidding. Telesis is awesome. It's just a bit more expensive. I'm going to be applying a layer of Prosaic over the strip on my forehead. I'm going to make it quite thick because YOLO. You have to wait for it to dry completely clear. If there are areas that aren't drying clear because they're a little bit thick, you can just go over it again with your cotton tip and just kind of blend those areas out. And then I'm going to very carefully pull the ball cap straight out without touching the skin because as soon as it touches it, it's going to stick. So you want to pull it out above the skin so it's super straight and stretched out and then gently press it into the adhesive. Now the back, you might need a helper to do this. So um, again, you want to roll up the ball cap, you want to put like a layer of Prosade, maybe about to the edges of where the neck is because I'm going to do the ears separately. Um, and you're going to wait for that to dry clear and then you're going to pull the ball cap straight out above it and again gently press it down into the neck. It can help if you pull your neck back a tiny bit um, rather than leaning forward that way it makes the ball cap a little bit tighter whereas if you're leaning forward and then pulled your head back after it was applied you can get wrinkles and stuff. Next I'm going to do around the ears so I'm just going to, ideally you'd have little tiny scissors to do this with but mine decided to disappear right when I needed them. So you're going to cut a little slit, I didn't angle mine completely right because it didn't sit completely flat so I think I should have done it a little bit more vertical towards um, where, the, where the ear meets the skin rather than more horizontal up towards the tip of my ear but um, basically you want to kit you want to cut a slit um, so that you can put it around your ear so you can glue it both in front of and behind your ear so I'm going to start with the in front of side of things so again I'm going to kind of hold up the ball cap and apply some prosid underneath and apply the prosid all the way down to kind of the side burn area in front of my ears and a little bit up the side of the ear as well um, and just try not to get it in your hair because it is a little bit of a bitch to get out of your hair um, I'm going to just make sure there are no thicker parts that won't dry. I'm going to stretch out the ball cap above the glue and then press it gently into the glue so that I don't get any wrinkles or anything stuck where it shouldn't be stuck. So again, you're probably going to need a friend to help you with this or like a mirror that where you can see behind your head. Um, so we're going to apply the prosade from where the neck prosade went all the way up to the tip of the ear. I'm just going to hold my ear out of the way so it's easier for David to apply. Um, and we're going to wait for it to dry and then we're going to um, press the ball cap down into the adhesive. So this is me fixing the bottom part and just applying a bit more prose. So if there's any areas that aren't holding, if they're coming up a little bit, you can just put some more prose underneath them, wait for it to dry and then repress it down. I'm going to repeat the same steps on the other ear. Now this is a fun bit, so I can show you guys how awesome it is to just watch the cap plastic melt away. So because I've used a Baldi's ball cap. Um, it is diluted with acetone, which I think you'll find most vinyl ball caps that you can pre-purchase are also diluted and melted away with acetone. So I'm just going to get a tiny bit of acetone on the cotton tip. You don't want it to drip down because it is quite drying. You definitely don't want it to get anywhere near the eyes. And I'm going to um, press the acetone dipped cotton tip into the edges of my cap plastic and just kind of roll it out towards my skin and you'll see it just melts away the plastic and just gives you this really nice edge where it just kind of disappears into where the skin is. I'm just going to work away all around the front of the head and then fall behind the head on the neck and behind the ear to get a friend to help me. Um, again, you can do this in a mirror. Um, if you're going to be using this for life casting, like a silicon life cast, this is where you stop. If you're using this to go underneath prosthetics or anything, this is where you stop. If you're using it to be a standalone board cap, this is where you paint it. One of the things that I've learnt, which is good for board caps, um, a lot of people use like rubber grease mask paint, but I just find that stuff really thick and kind of hard to use. Um, you can use Pax paint. And so if you're going to be buying Pax Paints, I recommend Thomas Serpinon's Pax Paints. They're really awesome. You can buy them from FX Warehouse and they come in a range of colors. Um, I have some from him, but mine weren't the right skin color. I have like a monster palette rather than a skin palette. So I did end up making my own Pax Paint. And the way that you make it is you get a non-tack 
like a non-tacky prosate adhesive and you mix it in 50% with acrylic paints but I'm not gonna really go into that because I'm, I'm still not 100% certain on what acrylic paints are skin safe and what aren't. Not that this is really touching my skin, it's on the ball cap, but I still want it to be absolutely skin safe and make sure I knew which acrylic paints you could and couldn't use. So I would just recommend buying PAX paints and if you want to learn how to make your own, yeah, I'd Google what acrylic paints are safe to use and I would Google the recipes, there's a lot of information online about that. So yeah, I made this one myself, but mostly because I didn't have a PAX paint and I was kind of in a mad and desperate rush to be like, oh, I need something to cover this. So we tried to make it match my skin tone. It's not quite right, but we're going to use the Skin Illustrator palettes just to tweak the colours afterwards we've applied the layer of PAX. So the layer of PAX can be quite opaque if you apply it thickly or you can thin it out with water. Um, and it also, it will seal the ball cap from being, you know, overly deteriorated by things like alcohol as well, like it kind of gives it like a seal. And because it is made out of prusé, you don't know, want to powder it just so that it kind of sets it and doesn't get sticky or anything weird like that. Although this is not no tack, which makes it a bit easier. You do just want to powder it all. Now, first of all, I'm going to be adding a bit of pinks back because you can see my face is quite pink. Um, my head wouldn't be overly pink, but we're going to put the layer of pinks down first. So it looks like I've got some blood flowing, flowing through that it is like real skin. Um, so I'm going to mix both the Coral Adjuster and the Rose Adjuster. P.S. I really want the Complexions palette. Hopefully I'll get one of those soon. Um, but yeah, for now I'm going to use those from the Flesh Tones palette. And I'm going to be using a splatter brush. Um, and the technique is just to dip it in with a bit of alcohol in the colours and then use your thumb or your finger just to splatter that colour across. And the reason that this technique works so well um, is because your skin isn't just like one color. The skin has lots of different colors going on. So if you splatter little speckles of color across, it's going to look more like skin tone. Um, next, I did the natural one tone, which is probably the closest thing to my natural skin tone, um, all over the head and I'm um, bringing it down onto my face to try and color match my face up to the ball cap. Then I did a layer of Lau One, um, which is a slightly darker color, just to get this. Um, just to darken up the ball cap a little bit. Then I did a layer of vein tone because my skin does have a bit of a cool blue tone to it. Um, and then I did um, and I did that as quite a translucent wash and then I also did quite a translucent wash of the olive adjuster colour because my skin is also slightly olive. Um, once I had done those colours, I did a bit of like a highlighter colour with the rice paper, which is the lightest skin tone in there. And then afterwards that, I went over it again with the natural one colour. And so it is like a lot of building up colours and being like, um, it takes a little while to get your eyes used to seeing, at least for me it took a little while to get my eyes used to seeing colours and I just kind of guess, and be like, oh, maybe it needs some more green and I try and I'm like, no, no, it's not that. But the more that you practice matching skin tones and adjusting colours to try and match the skin tone, the better your eyes will be at seeing the nuances of colour and um, the better you will be at knowing which colour to pick next. It really is just a matter of practice and getting your eyes used to seeing um, that. And then at the end, I went over my little stipple brush from Nellium Tools, and there are little spots of colour where it still looks a little bit, you know, too wide or too much like a ball cap or whatever it was. And so then I'd um, get a little bit of pinks or blues or, you know, natural um, one, whatever it is that you needed, and just stipple in the concentrated colour just in that one area to try and make it look um, like it fit in with the rest of the skin. Uh, lastly, I'm going to seal it all with a layer of Ben Nye Final Seal. Um, and so one of the problems with ball caps is they do tend to wrinkle kind of weirdly in the forehead um, and I found this both of the latex and the plastic ball caps they get this strange furrow brow wrinkle so I'll show you this one here um, it's not overly obvious with this one but there is a little bit going on um, so that's something to be aware of when using ball caps so if you can see how I make my ball cap you can click here and if you want to see me continuing on this look into my NUX tutorial from Mad Max you can click here um, yeah, and thanks for watching. Alright, bye guys!